Your friends, I still remember an incident of my childhood that happened when my nephew was ordained a priest and came to his home village to say his first mass. In those days, priesthood was still seen as a great honor in Holland. And so, my nephew was received as a king. In a decorated coach, he was driven home from the gate from the railway station, accompanied by a brass band and with all sorts of people coming out of their houses to clap for and cheer the new priest. And at home, where the whole family was gathered together, he was overwhelmed with presence. One of the gifts he received was a cake, a huge blue masterpiece of bakery, created by one of my cousins who was training to be a confectioner. Now, believe it or not, it was precisely that cake that almost became the cause of a big family drama. Because my cousin, I mean the cousin who was the baker, in all his innocence had thought it appropriate to put on top of the cake the imitation of a big chalice and a host. All in cream and candy and sugar. Great consolation. The family felt utterly scandalized. What was it? The image of the Holy Eucharist on a cake. Blasphemy. Who could make such a cake? Who could eat such a cake? And the whole family feet would have ended up in a big quarrel if the new priest had not managed to pacify the people by saying that after all, it was the intention that mattered and the intention of my personal behavior was good. Now this of course is slightly is a slightly ridiculous story. All the same, it showed the deep respect of our ancestors had for the Eucharist, Old Sacrament, Old Holy, Old Sacrament, even I. Martyrs have died for it. People have been trained to it in perpetual adoration. The Holy Eucharist has always been seen as the most blessed of all sacraments, crowning all of us, because Jesus himself is there, present, really present in the sacrament. And so it has always been seen from the beginning. The other day I read a sermon of St. Cyrillus, an old church father of the 4th century. Among other things he says, brothers and sisters, when you go to communion, be convinced without any hesitation that you do not eat a plain piece of bread, but truly the sacred body of Christ. Therefore, when you receive it, make sure that you do not drop anything of it on the floor. Tell me, he continues, if somebody would give you some piece of gold, would you not carefully see to it that none of the pieces would get lost? And should you therefore not see to it very carefully too that not even the smallest crumb gets lost of that blessed sacrament that is so much more precious even than gold and precious stones. Dear friends, do we too still have that same deep reverence for God's Eucharistic presence? in the Blessed Sacrament. Here, in our midst, the Pope says that some of our Catholics have lost it. 
And therefore, he has recently published a set of instructions with regards to our behavior during the Mass. We will publish these instructions in one of our next bulletins or spotlight. Though fortunately, most of what the Pope says is still practiced by us externally at least in our own mass celebration. Many of his guidelines concern the way we ought to receive the Eucharist. And for us, these guidelines are usually not really new. The Pope says we can receive communion either on the tongue as long as we are respectful or on the hand, standing or kneeling. He leaves us a choice, so if I'm well informed, Pope Benedict himself would prefer communion on the tongue and in a kneeling position. But there is one thing he says which has to be introduced or reintroduced by most of us again here, and that is, before we receive communion, if he says, each one of us has to make a bottle. Or, that is the alternative to kneel, but I suppose if we are going to kneel, each one of us, especially the older ladies and gentlemen, then our distribution of Holy Communion will last till the midnight today. So we better say to bow. I tried it already yesterday, and I looked at it, how it went, and precisely according to my expectation, it didn't go very well. Because people, when they have to do something new, are very slow in the uptake. And they are very slow to do something they feel a little bit uncomfortable about, to bow, how deep to bow. Most of them, they were only doing like that, only a token bow. I wonder what, what is the problem, actually? What is so difficult about this? If the Pope, if, sorry, if the bishop says to you, that you must receive communion of the hand because of some uh, contagious disease imagined or real in Singapore, or that you may not hold hands, you, you listen immediately to what he says. And now the Pope says, make the bow. You know what a bow is? A bow is yes. Before you receive communion, and then he is connect externally at you. It is it's a minor thing, not very important, but it is one of those things that help us remember that the communion is something very precious, that ought to be received with deep and special reverence and respect. But it is only the external performance, so to say, and of course this is not all that is to be said about the Mass. St. Paul, St. Paul, you can look it up in 1 Corinthians 11, 27 to 29. I use a bit my own words to make it simpler, but I, it is really what he said to her. It's not my own imagination. St. Paul says, and everybody who receives communion should examine himself first. Because if he receives communion, in a, an unworthy manner. He sins against the body of Christ and he eats and drinks himself a judgment. Let me therefore remind you of certain things which the church has usually always preached, although you don't hear it nowadays so much anymore. Let me remind you of the following things. That people who are divorced and live with the second husband, I'm not talking about people who are divorced and live as a single person, but 